Welcome to Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined today by Rick Goodix. He is a member of the Wisconsin State Senate, actually the Senate pro tem of that august body. What does that mean, sir? Well, what that means is that uh, at any given point when the Senate president is unable to perform her duties, right. um, I would step in and fulfill that role in her absence, whether it's temporary or, or other. So, uh, i got to say, you've been in the body for how long? About a year and a half? Yeah, January of 13 is when I got inaugurated and so you're from all, the 2012 election. You're already pro tem? I mean, what are you doing right, my friend? Well, you know, <laughs> what are you, you doing see talent, right? you got to utilize exactly, talent. Right? Exactly, exactly. So, no, it was an honor bestowed on me by my peers. Um, you know, they felt that uh, I would be best suited to, uh, to lead in that capacity. So I'm honored to do that. Right. So talk to us about your goals, your mission having joined the state senate since you know about a year and a half like we said yeah you know my background really is in local government right. and private industry uh, manufacturing to be specific and you know i just have a passion for economic development i love to see businesses grow communities prosper jobs created you know that's really what drives me and and you know so the committees that i serve on you know uh, and in being chair of economic development and commerce really lends itself to utilize me in that capacity. So let's so. talk about some of the programs you've championed. One of them is known as the Historic Preservation Rehab Tax Credit. Right. And when we think about the state of Wisconsin, you know, a fairly older state in the sense of its construction buildings, in the best sense. I mean, got some beautiful structures, but look, after a while, you know more than I, these start to get a little dilapidated, and there's a need to revitalize them. But what you've seen is that Revitalization doesn't have to mean tearing it down. Right, exactly. It can mean really keeping that character that makes Wisconsin so appealing. Well, what's unique about Wisconsin is we have so many historic preservation right. efforts going on within communities that we serve. And those community efforts uh, can sometimes get hampered by the lack of funding or the lack of investment by private investors. Um, to be honest with you, that our neighboring states were right. kind of taking us to lunch right. in, 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 in ta historic tax credits. So, you know, my effort was to get us on board and on par with our neighboring states in utilizing historic tax credits to revitalize some of these old structures. Right. So as I understand it, the feds give a 20% credit. Our friends in those neighboring states were giving 20, 25 percent tax credits and we in Wisconsin were giving 10 percent. Well, we were originally five. Five, oh my. And then in, in the budget they went to 10. Okay. And I continue to make a right. push to get to 20. And? Because we wanted to make sure that we're competing. What we're seeing is we were seeing a mass exodus of investors leaving Wisconsin. Wow. Going to states to invest in tax credits in Iowa, Ohio, um, you know, places that are, that are sure. really, you know, set to do those programs. And, you know, my thought process is why, why are we allowing that to happen? Why right. can't we compete? So uh, the legislature went along with the 20%, you know, going to 20%. And uh, it has served us very well. It is, it is so popular. Yeah, that, that was remarkable to me, how quickly a program right. like this took off. And the number of awards has been astronomical. And it's amazing how quickly we've seen the benefits right. uh, of the new program. Talk you know, to us about I'll that. Give you an example, 25 projects, 25 projects. Our investment in the state of Wisconsin was $34 million. And we're going to net and recoup in the state of Wisconsin, our economy, $417 million. Yeah, let's talk so, about that. So, I mean, that, that is incredible. I mean, the economic benefits yeah. of these credit programs. Like you said, you can make that extrapolation. But what about just the job impact? I mean, I think about all those individuals that will be working as a result of the revitalization efforts. In, in year one, 2,800 jobs were created, full time jobs, both in construction and in permanent jobs re resulting in the, the new, new structure being utilized in a new manner. So 2,800 jobs that were created just in year one, um, which was over $150 million in, in, in labor costs that were paid out. Are, are you is, surprised? I mean, you know, I've covered tax credits for a long time and revitalization. I don't know why, but I haven't. I, I got to say, I've never seen a program throughout this whole nation that has been so successful so quickly. I mean, usually it takes time for the market to hear about it and learn about it. How did this happen? Well, so let, let, me, let me quantify that because there was a pent-up demand, okay? We had uh, a lot of low-hanging fruit right, projects. Right, right. You know, and when we opened the gates up on the 20% tax right. credit, um, there were a lot of investors that had these projects in mind or already maybe on paper. Right. So that's why it took off so quickly. So when you get into year two, three, four, and five, 
that that demand and that speed is going to okay, slow well, down. Hopefully not. No, I, I know, but I mean, yes. you're going to get a lot of quality projects in the future that are going to have huge impacts in, in our neighboring districts yeah. and, mm -hmm. and historic districts. And, and what I've also learned, and you hinted at that, was the whole catalytic consequence of these projects. So when you revitalize X building, what happens across the street, oh, absolutely. down the block? There are so many ancillary things that take place when you, when you have all this buzz around a huge project in a small community. Right. All of a sudden, everybody wants to be part of that. Right. And everybody wants to you know, make their investments in some way, shape, or form, whether it's a $5,000 investment in their current property of course. or whether they revitalize their, their current property and, and take it to the next level. So it's really exciting in that way. I don't want to be a naysayer because, as you can tell, I see the benefits of these projects. I'm a neutral journalist, but be that as it may, you do hear a few rumblings about, oh, if you apply for the credit program, the regulations can be onerous, the federal regulations, the state regulations. How do you respond to your friends, you know, you worked in the industry, that are a little concerned about the requirements if you do accept Well, the one credits. of the things that we did with this, uh, this piece of legislation in, in creating this is that we, we wanted to make this a seamless process. We wanted to make it as easy and, right. and, and, and less cumbersome as possible. And, and you know, by the way that it, it's been utilized in the demand for the uh, for the tax credit, we've seen that it isn't a cumbersome process. That's good to hear. I mean, there are some tax credit programs that are out there that can be quite in depth, um, but this one here is run through the Wisconsin Historic, uh, you know, uh, uh, the society, the society, or, right. and it also includes WIDA or mm -hmm. WIDIC. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a great program. I mean, and, and it's not that hard to get into this program and utilize those credits. And I have to ask, I was a little you know, confused learning about the program in that I guess in some elements of part of a program, there's a moratorium because it's been so successful. There was. Explain how that works, just so our viewers can understand the, it. Their aide was explaining to me, but you know, give me a Yeah, there, there, there was, you know, because of the speed and the pent up demand, right, right. you know, we got to the $34 million threshold and um, we did contacted right. the governor's office and said, hey, we're at $34 million. <laughs> right. Right. You know, what do you want to do? So the governor turned the spigot off for a while oh, I see. And, and let things kind of catch up. Be, you know, because the credits, the credits aren't paid out in the front end, okay? So the credits yes. are paid out on the back end. Yes. So when the project's complete is when the credits are released. So even though we can say in the first year we had $34 million of credits utilized for this program, that money has not been expended mm -hmm. in the most part yet. Mm -hmm. It will be shortly after the projects start completing. But uh, nonetheless, the governor felt it prudent because we don't exactly know where we are with uh, with our revenue. You know, you don't want to go out and spend a hundred million dollars on credits and find out later you only had fifty million in, in re revenue to cover them. But as we speak today, is the project still moving forward? Is oh, the credit program so the moratorium, whatever yeah, it may be, has yeah. been pulled back? The governor or? did open it back up okay. again. Um, but but what I wanted to to let you know is that um, you know there's an effort right now in right. the legislature to. Um, you know, make those credits um, available for the next biennium. You know, we want to make sure that so we it have was a short program. It, it was only it, well, years. it was. It was two years, but then the governor kind of had said that we want to, you know, put a cap of ten million dollars on this program. Um, and in my mind, ten million dollars isn't enough to right. to make a, a dent in what we what we have for for needs in our community. So um, right now, we're working on getting that ten million dollar cap lifted and, and getting some more funds allocated. Uh, to put into that program. The program is going to continue. It's just at what level is it going to continue. So. so when do you think we'll hear about the extension? Because like we've learned, I mean, the demand continues to be great yeah. and it appears to be bearing tremendous benefits and assets for communities throughout Wisconsin. Yeah, we should know something in the next couple of weeks here um, what, what's going to happen with the, uh, with the funding for the program. But uh, I'm optimistic. I, I, my, my Senate colleagues um, well, you know, be, understand what how 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 great of an impact yeah. this has had for the state of Wisconsin. Must be pretty heady for you. I mean, you just joined the Senate, you champion this program, and boom, look what happens. Well, His name is Rick Odex. He is the Senate Pro Tem in the Wisconsin State Senate. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's Charter Local Edition.